Hello, friends, family, world. Luke here with another video. For those of you unfamiliar with our channel, my husband Tyler and I make weekly travel videos documenting our experiences since moving from North America to the UK. This is the fourth and final part of our Venice series. So if you haven't watched parts one through three, be sure to check those out. In today's video, I'll be talking about two of the smaller day trips that we made from Venice to the cities of Padova and Vicenza. First up is the city of Padova, which in English is sometimes referred to as Padua as well. It took us about an hour's train ride to get here from Venice. From the train station, we walked south to the Museo Civico di Padova, which contains the stunning Scrovegni Chapel. When you arrive at the museum, you can choose to buy tickets just for the museum or you can add on tickets to the chapel as well. If you're going to visit this attraction, we highly recommend that you visit the chapel as this is by far the highlight of the whole museum. Admission to the chapel requires going to the front desk and booking a specific time for the day. And if you arrive late, you actually miss the admission altogether. So in our opinion, it's in your best interest to go first thing in the morning especially if it's during peak tourist time. This is considered to be of very significant importance to Western art. We got our scheduled time and we had a bit of time to kill, so we used that time to walk around the museum itself, where we learned a little bit about the history of the area. Tyler provides a lot of very interesting information about this attraction in our blog post, so be sure to check that out at lukeandtyler.com. Once we were done with the chapel, we continued towards the city center, stopping along the way at the neighboring Chiesa di Eremitani. We then proceeded to the Piazza dei Signori, which is a major square in the city and also features a picturesque clock tower. We love smaller cities like this because it allows you to appreciate some of the charms of the architecture and culture without the crowds. Another part that we really enjoyed was the University of Padua and Palazzo Bo. Founded in 1222, the University of Padua is the second oldest university in Italy and the world's fifth oldest surviving university. The university has a particularly rich history in the area of anatomy. And one of the highlights of visiting this campus is visiting the world's oldest surviving permanent anatomic theater, which is where they would do dissections and studies of cadavers in order to advance the area of anatomy. We found this to be a really fun and unique experience. We of course couldn't finish the day without having some of Italy's famous coffee at a cute cafe in town before heading back to Venice for the night. On another day, we enjoyed another day trip westward from Venice to the city of Vicenza. We found Vicenza to be a really beautiful city to walk around and explore. First, we stopped at the Palazzo Pogliana, which featured some public art sculptures inspired by the works of Salvador Dali. We then headed to the Olympic Theater on the eastern side of town, where we also picked up a Vicenza card, a great option to consider if you're visiting a couple of the sites in town, as it saves you money in the long run. We were very pleasantly surprised to discover that they were hosting the international opera competition on the day that we were visiting, and it was open to the public. It was really such a cool and unexpected experience for us to watch these amazing performers perform their craft. It was especially nice to enjoy this while appreciating the gorgeous architecture surrounding us. We really do love unexpected surprises like this when we travel. Afterwards, we headed to the Piazza dei Signori, where we had the chance to explore the Basilica Palladiana. This site, along with other Palladian buildings in Vicenza, are recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. 
The top of the Basilica Palladiana provides stunning panoramic views of the city of Vicenza. We followed this up by visiting the Sanctuary of Santa Corona. The interior of the building was just lovely, with intricate pieces of art all along the walls. It really is amazing to see how much priceless architecture and art can be found in Italy and other countries in Europe. For our final stop of the day, we headed to the Palazzo Chiericati, which features a variety of art pieces dating back from the 13th to the 20th centuries. Our final tip for Vicenza is to visit the Cafeteria Bar Pigafetta, which is apparently recognized as one of the best cafes in all of Italy. All right, guys, that is it for this video and for our four-part Venice series. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned every Thursday where we post new videos about our travel experiences. See you next time. Bye.